and 2006, Sega was planning on releasing their first console since the Dreamcast. The console was similar to the current Nintendo Wii, except that the controller looked a bit more like a Dreamcast controller. The seventh generation console was called Sega Legacy. The first and only game ever worked on for the Legacy was a new game to go along with the console called Sonic Legacy. It was pretty much the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Expect the graphics were indie and there was first person view enabled. Sounds like a cool console, yeah. Everything was going better than expected. Before they announced it, as finished, Sega gave the Sega Legacy to five employees who had kids. They wanted the kids to test out the console and see how they liked it. Two of the families refused but the other three were more than happy to test it out. Sega even promised to give them a free console afterwards. Two days later, one of the employees, names will not be given, eight-year-old son was playing Sonic Legacy. After he had gone to bed at 10 p.m., he woke up at random, and turned on the legacy. A few minutes later, he walked into his parents' room. His eyes were widened, and he had an eerie smile. What is it, son? asked the father. The boy stood there with a big grin on his face. I'm Robotnik. He said in a raspy voice. The voice was distorted and muffled. Suddenly, the lights went out. The power was out all night long. In the morning, the mother went to wake their son for school. He wasn't there. Nobody ever found him. Similar occurrences happened to the other families. Sega was alarmed and visited each of the families. The families returned to consoles. The Sega employees and programmers decided to play Sonic Legacy to see if he had anything to do with anything. The cheerful title screen ran. Since the programmers created the game, they easily went through the game. However, during the final boss battle with Robotnik, something odd happened. The audio began to sound distorted. Suddenly the game paused. Sonic began to smile. It went to a cut scene. The programmers and employees stared at each other in shock. The big shock was that no Sonic game had ever contained a cut scene in the middle of the final boss. A cartoon Sonic sat down on a rock. He was looking at something glowing. The glowing stopped. It then cut to the body of Robotnik. The eyes were torn out. Some hair was pulled out. He was bleeding from wrinkles, and his nose was jerked to the right. Sonic began to cut open the body, and he put the body over his body. Sonic now looked like Robotnik. It then showed another Sonic running around. The Sonic dressed up as Robotnik gave an evil smile. The 
programmers and employees shook in terror. The fact that Sonic defeats his enemy, becomes Robotnik, and gets killed by another Sonic, boggled their minds. It was a terrifying chamber of suicide. All events after the cutscene finished are unknown. All that is known is that there was another cutscene afterwards. From the other room, people claim to hear a man speaking in Russian in a distorted voice. When they came back in the room, they found everybody lying there dead with their eyes ripped out. However, two of the employees survived. One is blind and is confined in a wheelchair for life. He refuses to speak to anyone besides his family and close friends. The other employee is able to see, but he has never spoken about his experience. He is unable to be outside without someone with him and is said to have recurring nightmares. All copies of the Sonic Legacy game were said to be destroyed. This led to the cancellation of the Sega Legacy console. I'm the Eggman by Great Ahuruti 35 V204. In 2009, an avid video game bootlegger found the Sega Legacy. The eerie part is that he was able to play Sonic Legacy on the console without a CD. A few days later, he was found dead in his closet, where he had hung himself. So this is just a warning to all people curious. Don't try to find the Sega Legacy, unless you're either willing to risk your life or suffer from recurring nightmares and demons.